Hi, my name is Kevin Sims and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. Today I'm going to be talking about the Visualizer tool in Train 700. In Train 700, the Visualizer is a powerful tool you can use to interpret data that may not be in a report or displayed conveniently. It works much like Excel in that you can see tabular data and graph it in any way you prefer. Because the tool has an enormous amount of variables, I'll cover how to use the tool so that you can manipulate it to fit your needs. The advantages of the Visualizer that you can view tons of variables in both demand and consumption capacities, you can view them in multiple different ways, and you can view them in side-by-side -side comparisons with any other alternative. By the end of this video, you'll be able to set up the visualizer, configure it to view the information you want, use it for troubleshooting, and export data into Excel. Let's start by talking about how to access the visualizer. To do this, you must calculate the program through the energy portion which means you must also calculate the design and system portions. Later, if you have already calculated design through energy, and all you do is change the plants section of the program, then you could just calculate the energy portion to save time and still utilize the visualizer. After the file has been calculated, access the visualizer by going into the View Results section on the Analysis tab and clicking on the Graph Profiles and Energy button. Once you hit that button, a new window will be displayed. It should look similar to this one. If you don't have all the options on the left available, don't worry. All you have to do is go up to the View button, and in the drop-down, check the boxes for Settings and Advanced. Once those are checked, you're ready to use the Visualizer. In this presentation, I will break down all the sections and explain how to use them. This first section is for the alternatives. It's fairly straightforward. The highlighted alternatives are going to show you the information that you select below and the unhighlighted ones will not. Because you can only have four alternatives in the project, that is also the maximum amount of alternatives you can view in the visualizer, meaning you cannot look at multiple files in the visualizer at a time. The most useful part of this section is that you can set up the visualizer to show side-by-side -side comparisons of any of the alternatives that you have. The time and system section is also self-explanatory. Just select the months you wish to view and when you hit the draw button, which I'll show shortly, the information will display for the months you have chosen. The default is from January to December, but you can select December as the first month and May, for example, as the last month. This wrapping of the months will work in the program, only showing you December, January, February, March, April, and May, but it will arrange them starting with January. The most powerful portion in this section, though, is the first and last system field. The feature is incredible for troubleshooting. This is because in the ECB and the Equipment Energy Consumption Report, those both only give you the entire building or entire plant's values. In the Visualizer, if you have a plant that is consuming tons of energy, you can break it down even further to figure out the exact system that is causing the issue. Then you can focus on fixing that system instead of floundering with the entire file or the entire plant. This section allows you to see certain day types. It does not show the information of daily values, but it will show only the hourly information for the days that you've selected. You will notice that even if you have a reduced year weather profile, you will see a Monday day type that is different from your weekday day type. This is because Trace automatically separates the large pull up or pull down loads that normally occur after a weekend drift and puts them on the Monday day type. This helps to make your model a little more accurate because it doesn't account for those loads on every single weekday. If you wish every day type to be shown, and what I mean by that is to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, instead of only Monday, weekday, Saturday, and Sunday, you must use a full year calendar. You can set the calendar library member by navigating to the main menu on the Project Navigator landing page. This is under the Actions menu, Change Energy Parameters, and then Calendar Code Field. The next section allows you to change the way you're looking at the displayed data. You can view the information in a table, or graphically, or both. You can also have the information stack upon each other so that you can get totals to compare against alternatives. Lastly, you can change whether you're looking at energy demand or energy consumption. This last part is particularly important because demand information is hourly, while consumption numbers are reported in monthly values. This section is all about picking what you want to see. The comps drop-down is just a conglomeration of pre-made selections, similar to the template section. But instead of grouping particular room inputs, you're actually grouping variables that you wish to track. 
When you start working with this part of the program, you'll notice that when you check a variable, you must also always select a color. This is because should you wish to switch the view and look at the information graphically, the program must know what color to use. You'll also notice that there are five tabs that you can select that will display different variables. You can select these variables from all tabs to look at at the same time. As you would expect, the names of the tabs give a pretty good indication of what variables you can find under them. The tree structure shows your systems. The visualizer may have listed these systems in a different order than how they're displayed in the Create System section. So if you're utilizing the Time and System section, you should refer to this to tell which system is which number. This section is also important for troubleshooting and information gathering because it has a list of all the things that you can view. One of the more common things that people select within this section is the cooling load checkbox because Trace uses hourly time steps, which means it gives you the BTUH for every hour for the plant. So if you have a pre-existing load, you can compare it against one you created in Trace and then adjust the Trace load profile to match the one you have in real life. We also have things like air flows for heating, cooling, exhaust, ventilation, and others. This is incredibly important for things like demand control ventilation. Since no report shows the air flows for every hour, there's no other way to tell if your DCV is working. But with this, you can view the ventilation rates for every hour and confirm that the ventilation airflow is fluctuating as it should. After you have used the visualizer for a while, you may find that you always look at certain variables, like all the heating coils and all the cooling coils. Luckily, we have a comps dropdown that will bring up all those selections for you. Then you can hit draw and view all the information. However, if you have a list of common selections that you look at, but these are scattered and do not have a pre-made comps drop-down, you can create your own comp with the save button. All you have to do is select the variables you wish to be in this comp and hit save while on a standard report. The program will say standard reports cannot be changed, please rename. You then rename, hit OK, and you will now have a selectable comp from this bottom drop-down that you can use on whatever file you bring into the visualizer. Just to note, no changes will have an effect until you hit the draw button. This is important because if you select variables and you actually want to see the information, you must hit the draw button. Lastly, as an example, if you frequently model water source heat pumps, you know that Trace does not have a report that shows coincident heating and cooling. Well, you can set up a custom report to have that variable and others to give you all the applicable information you need to review your water source heat pump in one comp. As mentioned before, you can have both tables and graphs up at the same time or look at them separately. However, should you wish, you may bring this information into Excel and save this data to use in other presentations. The name of the table section shown in the picture is where you can find the currently shown information in an Excel file. The file path will be different for your computer. If you wish to keep this information, you will need to do a save as while in Excel so you can rename the file. The reason you do this is because every time you hit the draw button in the visualizer, it recreates this .csv. Through how to use the visualizer, I'm going to show it to you in the program. Like I said, to start off, we get there by going to calculate and view results, running all the way from design through energy, in this case I've run all of it, and I've done both alternatives. I'll then go to view results, analysis reports tab, and then the graph profiles and energy button. Now it will take a second to open up, and it doesn't necessarily always show up with the advanced fields on the left. So what you have to do is go up to view, and hit settings, back up to view, and hit advanced. Now you should have everything on the left, and you can start finagling it as you wish. So I can hit preheat coil, pick a color, reheat coil, pick a different color, and then I can press draw to have it show up on the graph. Now there are other tabs I can click on, but we're going to leave it at that for now. One thing I will show you is how to get it into Excel. Now, the first thing we have to do is also select the table. So I hit draw, and you'll notice up here there's a file path to a .csv. That's where we're going to be heading. So I'll follow that file path. Luckily I already have it up. 
and I find the visualizer example underscore profile dot CSV, which you'll see right here. I'll double click. And now I have all the information in Excel that is currently in the Trace 700 visualizer. You now know how to use the visualizer. If you have any further questions, email us, the CDS Support Center, at the email listed above, or you can call the number. We're glad to help. Also, if you have any other topics that you would like to see turned into a video, email those suggestions in as well. Have a nice day.